The lats are one of those muscle groups that, when well developed, make a huge visual impact on your physique. This is partly due to the fact that they're a massive muscle group. They take up most of the back surface area and are an incredibly strong muscle group because of this. The lats also help to build the V taper, which gives you the appearance of a smaller waist due to adding width to your frame. There's nothing better than a Cobra style back making you look like a comic book superhero. As I've mentioned, the lats cover a large area of the back and thus have a few origins, making them responsible for a number of different functions. The lats main functions are shoulder extension as well as shoulder adduction, bringing the arm down from in front of the body or from the side. They also have two other functions internal rotation of the shoulder and lateral flexion of the spine which we'll address further with our exercise selection. It's also important to note the length of the muscle group and because of this the importance of training the lats in both their shortened and lengthened ranges. Training the lats in both ranges will maximize muscle growth. The lats are in their lengthened range when the shoulder is in a greater degree of flexion, think arms overhead, in movements such as pull-ups, chin-ups, and lat pull-downs, whereas they're in their shortened range when the arm is in a lesser degree of elevation. With all this in mind, let's get into my top three exercises for building wider lats. Number one, underhand barbell row. The barbell row is a staple lat builder and probably the best exercise for applying maximal loads through the lats while still providing a decent range of motion. Using a supinated grip or underhand as opposed to a pronated grip externally rotates the shoulder putting a bit more of a stretch on the muscle. Remember, one of the lat's functions is to internally rotate the shoulder. Not only that, but gripping the bar underhand will also allow you to keep your elbows closer to your body placing a bit more emphasis on the lats. If you want to take it a step further, try keeping your scapula retracted throughout the lift as this leads to higher lat activation. To perform this exercise, you can start either from the ground or from a power rack at about hip height. If you're using a rack, you can skip the first couple of steps and start from the point where you're standing upright. If you're starting from the floor, walk up to the bar and stand with your midfoot underneath it, feet shoulder width apart. Grab the bar with an underhand grip, arms shoulder width apart, and deadlift the bar into a standing position. From here, you'll push your hips back while slightly bending the knees and lowering the bar, and stop once you've reached a 15 to 30 degree angle. Brace your core by breathing in and tightening your abs. Pull the weight towards your belly button by driving your elbows back and towards your pockets. Squeeze your lats at the top and control the weight back down until your arms are fully extended before initiating the next rep. This will ensure that you're pulling the weight through a full range of motion. The main issue I find with this exercise is that most people tend to use more weight than they can actually handle, jerking back and forth and using a ton of body English in order to get the weight up is a telltale sign that the load is too heavy. If you're moving anything other than your arms, chances are you're not going to maximize the amount of load you're putting on the target muscle. Controlling the weight through the entire range, even if it means a little less weight on the bar, is not only going to reduce the risk of a potentially serious injury, but the amount of tension you're putting on the target muscle will have greatly increased. Number 2. Weighted Pull Up Whenever we're pulling a weight down from over our head, the lats become the primary target. Vertical pulling is by far the most efficient way to build massive wings. This is mainly due to their functions, extension and adduction of the shoulder. A study published in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research compared different grips on the lat pulldown. A V-bar with hands in a neutral position, an underhand pulldown similar to a chin-up, an overhand pulldown similar to a pull-up, and an overhand behind the back pulldown. They found that the pronated in front of the body variation led to the highest activation in the lats and therefore when applied to a pull-up, which is essentially the same fundamental movement pattern, should be the same. When it comes to grip width, 
the research seems to support the use of a medium grip over both a narrow or wider grip due to more activation on the eccentric portion of the exercise. To perform this movement, start from a dead hang, using a dip belt to add resistance. If you don't have access to a belt, you can simply place a dumbbell between your legs or feet, although this will get more difficult as you progress. Start by retracting your scapula and then pulling with your elbows, bringing your clavicle towards the bar. Avoid excessive rounding of the shoulders at the top and be sure to fully extend the elbows at the bottom of the rep. Number 3. Swimmer Row Like the pull-up, this exercise targets the lats in their length and range. This exercise is effective for a few reasons. Firstly, we're removing any assistance from the biceps, completely isolating the target muscle. Second, using the rope gives you more room to maneuver at the shoulder joint, leading to a better stretch on the lats. And lastly, you'll be able to get into a deeper degree of shoulder extension, which means a deeper contraction, whereas using the bar means the movement is stopped by the bar hitting your body. And rather than performing the exercise in a standing position as you would with the traditional straight bar variation, sit your hips back on the negative in order to get into a deeper degree of shoulder flexion, thus getting a deeper lat stretch. If you really want to feel the contraction here, consciously focus on driving the rope as far back and wide apart as possible at the end of your reps. There you have it, my top 3 lat exercises for a wider back. If you're following a split that targets each muscle group twice per week as I advise, here's how I'd implement these exercises into your training in order to focus on lat development. Day 1 Strength Barbell row with supinated grip, 5 sets of 5 reps. Weighted pull up, 4 sets of 6 to 8 reps. Day 2 Hypertrophy Barbell row with supinated grip, 3 sets, 10 reps. Weighted pull up, 3 sets, 10 to 12 reps. And swimmer row, 2 sets of 12 reps. Keep in mind these are just examples and recommendations may differ depending on the type of split you're running. For best results, aim to hit your back twice per week while focusing on progression. As long as you're training your back frequently while gradually doing more work, you'll have no problem building wider lats. Did you find this video helpful? If so, click the like button below as it'll truly help out the channel.